Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our May Small Business Resource Forum. My name is Samalit Hogan. I am with the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center Network, located here in Springfield, Massachusetts. We are a uh, uh, we provide uh, confidential and free business advisory services. Today, uh, we are joined by several of our Western Mass means business uh, of, um, collaborators, including um, Emil here from uh, Common Capital, who will be speaking to you shortly. In the meantime, I want to thank all of the partners in our collaboration, including SCORE, the Center for Women Enterprise, Franklin County CDC, Common Capital, uh, Valley Community Development, and of course, uh, the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center Network. It's located with locations in UMass, Amherst, Clark University, and Salem State. And last but not least, to our funders and the stakeholders who make these programming possible and all of the technical assistance we provide free of charge to you, the Small Business Administration, the state of Massachusetts, as well as Mass Growth Capital Corporation uh, provides support to many of the partners in this call. And I'm gonna remind you please to mute yourself uh, during this call so that we can uh, make sure that there's good sound uh, quality for the recording. Um, also, here's a, on the screen, I'm showing a, a list of all of the various um, uh, partners that are part of the Western Mass Means Business Collaborative. This is their contact information. We're going to make reference to some of them during the call today. So I think it will be really uh, important for you to have their contact information, to contact them afterwards, because we might not go into the detail or depth that you are looking for in specific areas due to you know, lack of time to cover everything. But, um, but make sure you got their contact information so you can contact them afterwards. If you're looking for um, uh, a, a small business development center nearest to you, please go to our website and you will be able to connect uh, to, to the folks uh, that are closest to your community. And a request for counseling form is always required in order to set up an appointment with a business advisor with the MSBDC. So for this particular uh, forum today, we sent out a survey, a brief survey to um, uh, all of you who have attended past forums as well to folks who have not been in forums and you asked for, this is the results of the survey, you guys wanted updates on the SBA program, the EIDL, the PPP, the SBOG, and the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. I'm not gonna cover the Restaurant Revitalization Fund too much today. Um, there will be a webinar uh, this uh, uh, today actually and tomorrow, um, and I'll provide that information to you towards the end of today's call, um, specifically uh, for the SBA webinar that we'll be hosting tomorrow on the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. So I'm not gonna cover that today, uh, but I'll cover a quick update on the other things and we'll leave enough time for Q&A. You also asked us to talk about uh, the grants that are provided by cities or towns for businesses impacted by COVID. So we'll cover some of those. And last but not least, we'll talk about the Springfield business, uh, City of Springfield, who has a, Spring, a business development loan fund that's been managed by Common Capital. Emil will speak about that. So the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, uh, basically you can still apply for a loan if you need one. Um, and loans prior to uh, April 7th are now, are likely eligible for the increase and the EI, this SBA has increased the amount that you can apply for an EID loan. Uh, I believe it was 250,000 in the beginning or something like that. <laughs> now it's uh, up to $500,000 uh, for, uh, for certain borrowers. So be sure to check out your email, any emails that come from sba.gov or updates sba.gov. Those are the only email addresses that you need to be really pay attention to. There's a lot of scams out there. So make sure you're only paying attention to emails that come from these two uh, types of emails. Additional information, of course, in regards to the EIDL is offered on the website. EIDL advances with the grants uh, that were offered before are no longer available. However, 
those who are eligible for a EIDL advance um, uh, targeted loan, basically they did not receive the full $10,000 advance back last year when they applied, may be eligible to apply for the rest of that $10,000. And the SBA is contacting those folks directly via email. Again, sba.gov email or the updates email, probably an sba.gov email address. You've gotten an email. If you have not received that email, you're probably not eligible to apply. For those of you who did receive the email, the email does contain information um, on how to apply for the additional grant funds. And um, you do need to be in a low income community as defined in section 45 DE of the Internal Revenue Code. There is a mapping tool that's available online to find out if you're in, in a community that's low income. And you also will have to demonstrate uh, even though you're eligible, um, you still have to demonstrate that you have more of a, than 30% reduction in revenue. More details, again, are on the sba.gov website. There's the link at the bottom of the screen there. On the PPP sat news for uh, folks who have not submitted their application yet, as of May 5th, the PPP loan the PPP loan program has run out of funds in the general funds. There are still some monies available that were set aside for uh, CDFIs, community development financial institutions or community financing institutions to give loans to minority owned and women owned businesses in underserved communities. So um, if you are in one of those uh, areas where there's a CDFI or CFI, you can contact them. Um, I believe, though, that uh, Common Capital, right, Emil, Common Capital is not doing PPP loans. Mm. So not, not every CDFI is doing PPP loans. And um, so, unfortunately, if, you, if your application is already in the pipeline, there may be a chance that you might get the loan. So I'm not saying you won't get it or that you will get it, but only if your application is in the pipeline already, uh, and being considered, there may be a chance you might still get some funds, but otherwise, um, uh, their banks are not accepting any more PPP applications at this point in time. And so far, this program has distributed more than 500 billion uh, in loans since its creation. Um, more importantly, for many of you who have received PPP loans, um, you will now uh, be most interested in learning about how to get it forgiven. So to apply for forgiveness, you will need to contact your PPP lender and complete the correct form. There's many different forms. I'm not gonna go into detail into which one of those uh, you should fill out. That's something you will want to discuss with your lender to make sure that you're filling out the correct form. Uh, there are easy forms that are for borrowers who meet very specific criteria, such as borrowers who have uh, uh, a loan that's $150,000 or less. And, um, and so the, I've created two bit.ly links, so short links for you here. So for those of you who have uh, a, a loan of $150,000 or less, and uh, there's other criteria as well that you need to meet in order to be able to fill out this form. Um, you will be able to um, go into these two links here and download the form and also read the instructions. So that's, um, that's mostly for small businesses, I believe 50 employees or less and also $150,000 or less in their PPP loan. So that's uh, for forgiveness. And you should um, wait until your, the end of your uh, period, whether it's eight weeks or 18 week um, sorry, eight weeks or 24 week coverage period um, to apply for your forgiveness. Now, a quick update on the Shutter Venue Operators Grant. I apologize for the small font on the screen. I know there's a lot of information here, but I'll just, this is just meant to give you a quick glance, uh, a quick update on what's going on with the Shutter Venue Operators Grant. So far, we, what we've heard from the SBA that as of May 3rd, uh, noon time, uh, they've received 22,538 applications. Out of those applications, 10,300 have been submitted to the SBA. The remaining have been applications that were started on the portal and were not completed. And so the application breakdown of those 10,300 applications that the SBA has received and were submitted via the portal, uh, you can see here the breakdown 
of, of who is applying for these, uh, for these funds, for these grant funds. And um, uh, about the large majority are live venue operators or promoters, that's 4,200 applications or so. Um, and museum operators, I apologize. Museum operators actually are the ones that um, have the, um, the, those are 522 applications. That's the least applications that were submitted. But anyways, um, very important on this is that the SBA is not uh, providing assistance directly, like advice to, to people who are applying for this grant. You really have to go through an SBA partner, uh, resource partner, like the MSBDC, the Center for Women Enterprise, SCORE, in order to get assistance to apply for this grant. So I put, I put on the screen the, the various um, uh, web addresses for those organizations so you can contact them directly, set up an appointment and, um, and get help that you need to uh, apply for that grant. In regards to COVID-19 grants that are offered uh, to communities, um, there, are, there are three separate programs that I'll talk about today. I'm sure there are others out there and I apologize if I missed them today, but I'll talk about these uh, important three that are affect here in the Valley uh, that we're aware of um, that they're still very active and still accepting applications. One of them is from the Valley Community Development uh, located in Northampton. Uh, for the town, they've, they've collaborated with the town of Amherst to provide a grant up to $10,000. And so you will want to go to valleycdc.com to get more information on that program. Also through the Valley CDC, they're providing uh, a, a similar grant up to $10,000 to folks that are located in Agawam, East Hampton, Granby, Hadley, Hatfield. South Hatley, Southampton, Southwick, or West Hampton. If you're in any of those communities, you can go to valleycdc.com uh, and go to Small Business Assistance and find out the information for the COVID-19 uh, grant. And again, you can reach out to any other folks. I'm gonna backtrack real quick. Uh, any of the folks here in the, oh yes, here you go, free assistance. Not only can we help you with the SVOG, we can also help you with the COVID-19 grant um, for, for Valley Community Development. So reach out to these folks for assistance for uh, applying for those grants. Uh, last but not least, um, also the Cuevo Hill uh, Valley, uh, Cuevo Valley Com Community Development Corporation. I always get their name confused. I apologize, guys. Um, it's still early in the morning for me on a Thursday. Um, they are also offering a micro enterprise assistance grant. And um, this up to $10,000 as well is very similar to the Valley Community Development Grant. The contact information there is Melissa Fails and her phone number and email are located at the bottom of the screen. So that's an update for, for me for today uh, to respond to responding to your requests for updates on the various SBA programs and COVID-19 grants. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Emil Farjo so he can give his update. So Emil, take it away. Thank you, thank you, Samalee. That's good that you remind me that it is Thursday today. Oh my God, tomorrow is Friday. <laughs> good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Emil Farjo. I work with uh, Common Capital as a business assistant coordinator and uh, here joining me, my colleague, uh, Jennifer Sanchez, the director of outreach and communication. Uh, what I like in this uh, resource forum that we are providing you, the business owner and the community with the resources to, uh, if you have a business to start your business or to think about starting a business or if you have an existing business to grow and succeed and continue. Uh, thriving in, in uh, your business. Uh, Common Capital is one of the nonprofit organization that we are a loan fund. So we are not a bank, uh, but we give uh, loans to small businesses. Uh, we are committed to a thriving local economy in order to create positive social and community impacts. So we focus a lot on the community. This is why we called uh, CDFI. Our mission is to strengthen the communities by creating economic opportunities for low and moderate income 
people of color, women, of, uh, women and minority in Western Mass. Uh, Common Capital founded in 1990 and uh, we are right now subsidies of Wayfinder uh, back in 2017. We are located in Springfield right now. We are a CDFI, a Community Development Financial Institution. We are an SBA microlender. Somali, are you showing the presentation? Sorry, I didn't. Are you going to share the presentation or? Oh, I'm like? sorry, Emil. Oh. Um, hold on one second. I apologize. You sent me That's your fine. slides, correct? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I see the same backgrounds. <laughs> okay. I, I'll I'll get it up in just a second. Yeah. You know, one minute. Okay. Here we go. Okay. I thought you were going to share it. My apologies. That's fine. <laughs> so I passed the two first the first two slides. Mm hmm. Next. There we go. Okay, so we are founded in, in 1990, as I mentioned, and uh, we are a primary service the four counties of Western Mass. Uh, we are a team of six members, the president, uh, a lender, loan fund manager, uh, myself, the business assistant coordinator, a credit analyst, and Jennifer, the director of outreach and communication. Next slide. Here we are. Next. Okay. Uh, our loans is a uh, size of up to 300,000. Uh, we make loans to small businesses who don't have the ability to get a loan from a traditional lender, a bank or a credit union. Uh, interest rate is higher than a bank, but it is lower than a credit card. Uh, typically, the, our terms is a five years uh, term. Uh, we work with startups, existing businesses, and a variety of, uh, for many, many businesses purposes. Any uh, idea that in, in, in our portfolio, you see a lot of different uh, uh, businesses, hairstyle, uh, grooming business, uh, grocery store, retail, uh, manufacturing, restaurant, a lot we have, uh, service businesses, uh, auto dealer, and uh, you name it. We have a truck driver. We have two uh, women who purchase their uh, big truck to, to drive, uh, child care, and uh, some agriculture and art uh, programs. Um, so this is, as I mentioned, we are different than a bank. That means that we look to the character. The applicant, when they apply to the, to the loan, we look in a different lens. <clears throat> it is not a number that we, a number of application, no, we see the character, you have the ability <clears throat> to speak with the, excuse me, <clears throat> with the lender to tell your story if you have bad credit or if, so those are the things that we look to the character, we look to the uh, mission of this business and uh, then we will see uh, how we can approve this loan and how we can make this uh, loan happen. We have a flexible loan program specifically for the businesses in Springfield and we will speak later. Jennifer will cover this uh, by the end of the, pres the presentation. Next, please. And as I mentioned, what the, the, the key drives of uh, the loan of the character is improving lives, providing opportunity, job creation and retention, essential community services, neighborhood renewal, uh, environmental sustainability, stability, business that are built to stay, uh, regular, uh, re regulate local do dollars as well. We keep the money locally here. Uh, we have an invest fund program as well. And as well, during the pandemic, we work a lot with, uh, with our businesses to keep them uh, stay and open uh, during those grants that uh, somebody just mentioned. Uh, we help our clients. So we are not only lending people, no, uh, we help our client as well to have access to free money. Uh, myself and the business assistant coordinator, I uh, work directly with, with our client, walk them through all those applications, 
the state level application of grants and uh, the PPP and the SBA programs. Next, please. So in addition, if you get approved and you get the loan from Common Capital, uh, you will receive a free business assistant for the life of your uh, loan and above and beyond. We, we just here to help. Uh, so after you uh, prove your loan, even pre-loan, we, uh, we provide free business assistance to our borough. It is through a one-on-one -on -one coaching with a member of our team and one of our expert consultant. So we will hire a consultant to work directly with the borrower. And uh, we work uh, with our borrower to help them, to help their business grow and succeed. Sorry, I can't read my slides. <laughs> uh, Businesses typically, typically include help in uh, the business owner to learn how to create, understand, and use financial statement. You know, it's very important to understand your, uh, to understand your numbers. So this is what we can uh, always focus. We will, uh, have a business consultant, a bookkeeper, or an expert in accounting and or QuickBook to train the borrower to how to use any any accounting software. Uh, you know, the, the most popular is the QuickBook. So uh, we will uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with the consultant and the borrower to walk them from day one, whenever they receive the loan, before having any uh, transaction, they will set up their uh, QuickBook to teach them how to manage their money, how to track their expense, how to track their sales, their income, uh, everything. So by the end, they can generate a report. They understand the profit and loss, uh, financial statement, cash flow, all those th uh, things with a very deep explanation and training to the borrower. So by the end, they can be uh, ready to go by, they, by themselves to continue uh, following their, their uh, numbers and their financials. Because, you, you know, when you build a very solid foundation, you can continue uh, well. As well, the other area that we are focusing is the marketing and social media. Uh, we help them to create a marketing strategy. We will hire a consultant to work with them directly uh, on their social media platform, any kind of website or uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Google, all those things, they will, those people, the expert, they will teach them how to uh, take care of those uh, area and how to keep it as well. They will continue working with them uh, as long as they feel that comfortable to go, to go by themselves. It can, a couple months, three months, and even if we have an existing borrower after a year or two years, they still can return back and ask for uh, additional business assistance. Next, please. So borrower one-on-one -on -one advisory uh, services. So it is a one-on-one -on -one primary focus on bookkeeping, cookbook, and social media. The other, the other thing that we are doing with this collaborative with the Somalid and the other collaborative in this uh, group, the Center Women Enterprise and the Valley CDC, Franklin County and SCORE, ourselves and the Small Business Development Center, we create those series of webinars. So our borrower have the access to those webinars. We share with them. Uh, if they not able to attend, we will make sure to have them access to, the, to those free uh, uh, web series of webinars, which is run by very expert people uh, and encourage everyone of you to, to watch them. They are free. As well, we covered those uh, webinars about any update about the COVID-19 uh, resources for the relief fund. Next. Next. The Springfield Small Business Loan Program. So Jennifer, if you are able to join and to cover this program. I'm here, I can't start the video for whatever okay, reason. Hold on. Let's see, let me make sure. Okay, go ahead. You can now click the button. There you go. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Welcome. how are you guys? Thank you for having us. Um, so yeah, the Springfield Small Business Loan Program. So Common Capital does micro lending for those that 
who may not be able to obtain from a traditional bank. Um, but what we have also done is partner up with the city of Springfield. So if the business has been affected by COVID, um, if they've had to put structures in place for safety reasons, if the business had to have been pivoted or shifted directions in order to make sure that they were successful within the last year, their loan can be partially forgivable. And what that means, an example of that, and every case is different. This is just an example. If for whatever reason your business was affected by COVID and you had to apply for a loan in order to make sure you get things back in place, um, and let's say you apply for a $30,000 loan, it's very possible that 10 to 15,000 could be forgiven. And so the way that would work is that you would ask for the full loan um, and every year that you would pay on time and, and you know make your payments, a percentage of that loan would disappear. And so at the very end, that portion of the loan that was considered forgivable is just gone altogether. Um, so we have funds for that and there is plenty of funds still to go around. Um, I'm not sure how many businesses are aware of that. And again, it's in, in collaboration with the city of Springfield. Um, it's called the Springfield Small Business Loan Program. It does have to be located in a CDGB um, eligible census tract in the city of Springfield. And most of Springfield is, there's some parts that aren't, aren't but for the most part it is. Um, I'll give you some examples as to how this can be used. Um, so for example, if you had, um, a business and your pivot was to make deliveries or if your pivot was to install barriers in order to make sure um, you could open up due to the COVID restrictions, if you needed it for working capital for anything that was in any way affected by COVID would probably most likely qualify. Um, like Emil has stated before, we try to help everyone. You can't help everyone, but the application is literally two pages long. You would hear from our lending department as soon as you did apply. And what you would need to come prepared to answer is really how much you need and how you're gonna be utilizing the money in order to make sure these COVID restrictions um, or how this money would be used would help you be successful during this pandemic. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a little bit about the Springfield Business Loan Program. I'm not sure if you guys have any questions on that, but we can discuss those and answer those a little bit later. Um, Emil, I'm not sure if you want me to go through the borrowers or if you want to cover that portion of it. Uh, next slide. So yeah, we have a variety of, of <clears throat> borrowers who are in the community, as I, as I mentioned, different city from the west of Worcester all the way to the border of the western uh, border of, of Massachusetts and uh, we love them all. Next slide we have one of our uh, testimony and, and uh, I had a good, I had a goal to open a salon in my uh, hometown of Springfield after 13 years of working for an established business and six more renting a chair at another uh, beauty salon, Common Capital helped me make my dream come true. They believed in me and provided finance, financing and guidance so I could get my business going. Today, I got to do, to do what I love in my own salon, provide, provide job opportunities and keep the people of my community looking good. Alicia O'Connor and her business in uh, Springfield. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Somali. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Emil, and thank you, Jennifer, for um, adding that information. This is what these forums are about. So this is, the forums are about sharing information about resources that are available to you, to business owners. So whatever you heard here today, please share it. We hear from a lot of people that, oh my goodness, I didn't know about this program. I didn't know I could get the help I needed until it was too late. So you can be somebody's um, guardian, guardian angel, if you will, and help them avoid costly mistakes and avoid going in the wrong direction on their business by connecting them with resources that are available in our community to them for free. So at this time, I do want to encourage all of you to ask questions for us. It could be about some of the grants you heard about. It could be about all the resources that you haven't heard of that you want to know about. Um, this is your chance to ask us any questions whatsoever regarding businesses, um, and we will do our best to answer them. We also have other people here in, in, uh, that I want to recognize, um, and I did earlier, uh, we have Len Gendron from SCORE is here joining us. Uh, 
Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Lynn, if, if you like to start your video and join us in this panel discussion that we're going to be having, uh, feel free to do so. Um, we also have Sam uh, Previer from the Women, Center for Women Enterprise. And I'm looking on the screen here. Um, I think that those are the folks we have, Jack Lamente from um, Bali Community Development. So if you would like to join us, please uh, do so as well. Um, and we have a question in the chat. Can you email us these recordings? Well, guess what, uh, Leo, can I call you Leo? Because I, I think it's Leopold, maybe. <laughs> so um, we are recording all of these and we're posting them on our YouTube channel. So you, you actually, we don't need to email this to you because you're getting edited and posted on our MSBDC YouTube channel. So find us on YouTube. Um, I'll see if I um, have a quick moment here to uh, find you the link, the direct link, and I'll post it on the chat. But in the meantime, you can always just search for the awesome YouTube and all of our videos are there. Also, they're, they're getting posted on our Western Mass Means Business website which I'll put the link, I can find that really quickly. And I'm, that may be the easiest way for you to find all of our recordings. When you go to our website and you scroll down towards the bottom, we are uploading, we're posting there the latest recordings of all of the forums and the, and the, um, the webinars that we're doing as part of the uh, uh, how to uh, running a successful business series. Uh, which is almost over. Next week on Tuesday, we're going to have uh, Don La Rochelle from the Center for Women Enterprise do a presentation on how to handle conflict in the workplace, especially now that many of us are either working from home, working remote, hybrid, what have you. So there's a lot of uh, uh, different um, situations happening now that weren't happening there before. So um, any questions? So let me ask you guys, uh, uh, Len, Emil, Jennifer, what are some of the questions that you've been getting from folks most recently uh, in regards to you know, uh, help for, for businesses? What are some of the questions that you're getting? Well, most of the uh, questions that we have is uh, uh, revolves around the reopening process. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, restrictions do we have? We see the governor releasing uh, uh, restrictions and so forth. How does that apply to me? Uh, those kind of uh, those kind of questions. Uh, there is a bit about uh, rebounding from a financial standpoint. In other words, I've had this big hit. Maybe I got some. Um, <clears throat> maybe I got some uh, PPP or other funding. Um, uh, how does that fit into my long term plan for uh, the rest of the year and into 2022? So those are the, the, the kind of the, the basic type of questions that we've got. In addition to the typical, uh, uh, we've seen an uptick in uh, new business starts um, as well. Right. I, I'm, I'm so glad you bring that up. I was surprised in our survey that didn't come up, you know, that people wanted to hear about the reopening guidelines, but maybe we sent the survey way too early. <laughs> and now that things are, are, are happening, uh, people are definitely more uh, curious about that. I would say that, you know, um, uh, you know, to be safe, yes, do go to mass.gov and be sure to read all the guidelines there carefully. I believe there are guidelines by industry, correct, Len? There are yes. guidelines yeah. for, by industry. So you have a restaurant, you go to the, to the guidelines for restaurants. If you have a hair salon, you go to the guidelines for a hair salon. So they try to make it easier for folks to understand what are the uh, limitations or requirements on reopening. Right. I think some of the concern goes around the cost of those, uh, of those um, accommodations that we make for the, uh, for the reopening process. Mm -hmm. You also bring up a really interesting point. There are people who are looking to start businesses now. Yeah. Um, it, they haven't stopped. Even during the pandemic, we had several new businesses start. Um, what are some of those uh, businesses that you have seen start recently? Um, uh, Len, Emil, Jennifer, whoever wants to go. We've had artists, um, uh, various art-related uh, projects, uh, things that are uh, kind of like maybe have been hobbies that now they want to do businesses with them. Um, we've had some transportation. Some folks are uh, looking at uh, trying to help uh, maybe elderly or disabled uh, uh, kind of trans uh, uh, transportation things. Healthcare, uh, especially um, uh, home health uh, 
uh, support, uh, caretaker uh, kinds of things. Uh, we've got, uh, um, I think, one restaurant, but that's not a predominant uh, category these days. Um, right. Yeah, I agree. I've seen uh, the, uh, very similar businesses to yours. I've also seen some tourism businesses, people mm -hmm. who are um, planning uh, to do tours here in the Pine Valley of some of the most um, you know, beautiful scenery areas that we have, whether it's a, a river run, a paddle, you know, a stand up paddle surfing or you know, mm -hmm. kayaking. So there, there are companies that are starting to put together tours for folks, uh, whether it's corporate or individual individuals uh, and staying here in our hotels. Um, so there, there is a question here in the chat. Let's see here. Um, so there's someone here that lives in the Boston area and wants to take a class to help her start a business. How does she sign up for a class? She's someone in Cambridge, but was only for residents uh, in, of the Cambridge area. So uh, you can sign up for a class. Uh, SCORE has a lot of starting a business courses that you can sign up online to score.org. Uh, you can find the, the classes nearest to you. Um, us here at the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center in the Western Mass area, we have two classes every month. The first Monday of the month and the first Thursday of the month, we have a basics of starting a business. It's a three hour class. It does have a SBA, Oreste Varela presents in our class as well. So there's many, many opportunities to sign up for a free class on how to start a business, how to turn your hobby into a business, how to formalize it. And so you can do that. I know SCORE, we do that, we do that as well. Uh, do you know of any other I think those are the main ones that that you know we 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 would encourage you to sign up for, and you can do that right on our website. You don't yeah. have to call anybody; just go online. You wanted to add something else, Len? Uh, from the uh, Boston area, the uh, Score chapter is very active over there, and you'll find a number of different uh, 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 Score uh, workshops on starting your business. It's also a district wide coming up. I think uh, June eleventh, uh, and then as Samalid mentioned, uh, both. MSPDC and SCORE uh, provide monthly um, workshops for starting your business. Ours is also a three-hour three workshop. It sounds like a, a long workshop, but actually the material is, um, is kind of new and the various presenters that, that are involved with it. Uh, the last time I asked our, our clients, uh, uh, what do you think about the three-hour format? And they said it didn't feel like three hours because so much is happening in, a, in that process. I'm sure, Samalit, in your, uh, in your organization, you get a lot of these uh, questions and the questions keep the, uh, keep the process moving quickly. So don't be intimidated by three hours. Uh, it's a very interesting three hours, regardless of uh, who's presenting it here. Right, and um, I wanted to share real quick, um, I do have, um, website up here and I'm trying to to see if I can get it for you with the upcoming trainings that are on our on our website there's uh there's quite a few and yes there's so much to cover in those classes that you know people it doesn't really feel like you know you're doing three hours and think about it um this is a, a life-changing decision starting a business is not an easy feat so uh, you do want to be informed. You want to, you know, get as educated as you can on on how to start it uh, right the right way. Um, avoid costly mistakes and um, something as simple as, you know, how do you get your EIN number? I've mm -hmm. heard of people, unfortunately, that have paid to get an EIN number, and yes, it hurts my that. heart. And I feel I feel for them. Um, and then I say, you know. It, you could have gotten this for free at the irs.gov website. And I showed them how to do that. Obviously, by then it's too late. But for other people who it's not too late, who haven't started their business, we love to educate you on how to go about uh, starting a business. So I just wanted to sh real quick uh, show uh, the SBDC website. Here's all the trainings. Um, there's a lot of them. One in particular that I promised to mention to you because we didn't cover this today is the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. As you can see, we have a webinar tomorrow. Um, there's actually one uh, today at 1130. 
if if you still you know you will still have time to make it because we're going to be ending this by 10 so there's one today at 11 30 and one tomorrow at 10 a.m with the sba we're going to cover in detail the restaurant revitalization fund so but all of our trainings are posted there on the website so um Another, another question that I get a lot these days too, uh, where do I get money for a startup? So there's all this money for uh, folks who have been in business, you know, prior to February 15, 2020 is one of those dates that the SBA put out there that you have to have been in business. Uh, but, and, but what about those folks who are starting up? Where can they get funding? Go ahead, Emil. <laughs> <laughs> we are here. So yeah, this is why we are here. This is why we are in this group. Uh, don't hesitate at all. Don't be shy. We are not, as I told, we are not a bank. We are a community. We are, so we are one of you. When you apply, uh, tell your story and we, we understand your story, but you need to know what you are doing. We still, we, we, we will, you need to, you know, it is a commitment. When you, uh, when you take a loan, it is a commitment. When you start your business, it is a commitment. So. Uh, be prepared, whatever uh, someone had mentioned and uh, Lynn mentioned, to be prepared in your business plan, to have your numbers ready, you, you have a projection, uh, how much you want, how you will spend this money, why you need this money, and then come to us. Before you come to us, try different things. Let's try the friend, family, if you have saving, if you have uh, any other source of free money, use this in advance because the loan is not a free money. We give you the money, but it is not free. You need to pay back and there's an interest as well. Uh, if there is any grant, search for any grant. By the end, if you, let's say, if your project is 50,000, just an example, and you were able to secure 25,000, Okay, come to us and borrow the 25,000. Uh, so as I mentioned, have your presentation ready and have your uh, business uh, projection ready and apply. And as Jennifer mentioned, it is a two page application. There is nothing you do, you just your name, your uh, information, just a brief, very brief couple sentences about your business and uh, how much you, you, you want to ask. And then our team will, will contact you and you can start the conversation. Uh, so don't be shy, don't be afraid. If you have an idea, uh, still, maybe it is a hobby, attending those webinars, attending those uh, workshops and turn your hobby to a real business. But uh, yeah, as I told, I encourage you to, to visit our website and if you are, Really, your idea is ready to go. Uh, try to reach out to us and we are here to help. And don't forget, our loan come with the free business assistant, which is worth a lot. To be honest with you, to have a business coach on the life of your business, that that crucial. To have You have to have someone to speak with and to share your uh, success or your, your uh, hard time as well at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Thank that's you, Emil. Thanks for that. Go ahead, go ahead Lynn. Uh, that's really great, uh, uh, Emil. That's an unusual thing in the lending industry, uh, and it certainly is something that uh, um, that is very good for our clients that are working with uh, uh, Common Capital. Um, I think that's one of the things that sets you apart. But I think that's also something that we mentioned when we're, whether it's the starting your business or any of the other uh, workshops that we uh, that we present. Uh, as a group, uh, we work together with all of the, the organizations that, that Samalid mentioned. So you can approach any of us and end up using uh, resources of all of us. Uh, and we encourage that because it's a community that we're trying to build here. And your business can be an integral part of that community if we want you to succeed. Uh, I think as we have all mentioned here uh, a little bit, starting your business is only the first step. When you take that workshop, you're going to have other things, your accounting, your HR, your uh, all of those other aspects. And we cover those in different workshops as well. But also you get people to work with you on those things, whether it's MSBDC or CWE or uh, Common Capital, uh, CDCs, uh, whatever. Don't try to do this alone. Mm -hmm. uh, get some help uh, uh, to work with you on that. 
Yeah. And especially I, for the businesses, sorry, sorry, for the businesses in Springfield, get advantage from this uh, program that we are partnering with the city of Springfield that uh, Jennifer mentioned. You know, you can be eligible for half of your loan to be forgiven or just have a, a different uh, simple terms to, to pay back. So, so I'm going to bring up the contact list again, because I think it's important for folks to understand <clears throat> how our ecosystem works here to support in small businesses. This is just a snapshot of the ecosystem here in Western Mass available to support businesses. Other programs that are not included in here, for example, where it's Valley Venture Mentors or e for all in Holyoke, um, they're also part of very important part of our ecosystem. But I'll focus on these on these folks for today that are part of our of our network and Basically, one question that I get a lot is like, where do I go first? And honestly, if you have, it depends on where you're at. If you're a startup, you just you just have an idea. You have you have never been in business before. You just have an idea. Absolutely, take advantage of all of the training programs. Go to the webinars first, to the workshops first on how to start a business. There, you will meet people who are mentors, coaches, advisors, who then you can sign up you know, for an appointment to follow up. Whether you do that with SCORE, where they have volunteers that are at the ready in various industries to help you. They do a lot of their uh, mentorship uh, by phone or via video. Sometimes um, when, 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 uh, when it makes sense in person, once uh, restrictions are lifted. But, um, but also, uh, so we like to say, like if you just have an idea on a piece of paper or at the back of a napkin, you know, go to SCORE, Go to, um, you know, you can also get some help from E4All if, uh, in Holyoke, if you're in that area. Um, if you need help uh, securing financing, you know, you, you already started your business or maybe you're sort of in the midst of starting the business, you're already a, bit, a little bit advanced and you need that help to get financing to get to the next level, go to the MSVDC, right? You can go to the MSVDC, you can go for the Center for Women Enterprise as well. Um, if, if, if you're a woman owned business, they also help businesses that are not necessarily holding for sale women owned, but they primarily focus on women owned businesses. They also have a, uh, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to mess this up. It's the, I think it's the veteran outreach center, a VOC office, veterans outreach center. So for veterans, uh, who are looking to start a business or have a business and need help, um, that is under the umbrella of the CWE. So you can go to their website, cweonline.org and go straight to that section of their website and get some help from there. But again, um, we, uh, all of us work very closely together and we have the templates that ca Common Capital, for example, requires for those uh, business, uh, the business financial forecast, two year, three year um, estimates or, or forecasting for your business. We help you do that here so that you don't have to necessarily go and get an accountant or a bookkeeper and pay all that money right away to be, to be able to do it. We can provide that assistance to you for free. Um, also, uh, Franklin County CDC, I have to mention, they have a, the Western Mass Fruit Food Processing Center. So if you're looking to start a, uh, a food business, a food product, or you've already started, you're doing it from home, but you need to scale it up, connect with the Franklin County CDC and go check out their Western Mass Food Processing Center. They also provide uh, loans, uh, USDA uh, loans for small businesses in rural areas, and they have other programs there as well. I'm not gonna attempt to tell you about all about their organization. Please visit their website. In Valley Community Development, primarily focus on housing, but now also for, um, help uh, in now also involved in economic development and small business assistance. They've hired a couple uh, additional consultants to help with those COVID nineteen grants that I showed you before. So um, so here's here's a snapshot of just just a piece of all of the resources available to help you. And this is why we're doing this uh, forums to be able to educate you on this so you know about it and you share it with others. So in looking at the chat. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, so Sam did confirm that there is the, the Veterans Business Outreach Center and she put the link on the chat so you can look in there. And um, 
let's see. Um, so a question, um, so just a point of clarification, Emil, something that you brought up a couple of times, that additional assistance that you guys provide is specifically for borrowers, correct? Once they become a correct. borrower. Correct. So before, if you're not a borrower yet, you should definitely reach out to all of the other resources that I correct. pointed out just a, a minute ago. Yeah, which is all the refer most of the referrals that we get to our loans is by you guys, by the Small Business Home Center and SCORE and the Center of Enterprise. All the people in this forum, they refer people. So they start working with you guys and then you refer them to them. Uh, as well as in Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and there is sometimes, let's say, there is in between uh, when we might need to step in a pre uh, pre-loan business uh, technical assistant as well we provide this for free mm -hmm. and jennifer i understand that common capital is now offering assistance in in various languages or you're able to translate for people who are not english is not their first language yeah so i um well we're doing all the brochures and the flyers in spanish now and obviously i'm on the team so translation should not be um, a barrier or a challenge anymore i think in the past it's been primarily english so i'm happy to help um you know serve as that middle person with whatever they need so se habla español en common capital se habla español en el small business development center uh, también yo sé que len probablemente tiene alguien que habla español so mm -hmm. you can uh, reach out to us uh, and with your specific language uh, requirement. Sometimes, you know, right now, English and Spanish are the most popular, but Emil, you also speak another language, correct? Of course, I speak Arabic. Very good, very so, good. So Arabic is also spoken. So we have three languages. You do? Go ahead. What no, are they? We have no, oh, no. three languages. <laughs> okay. English, okay. Arabic, I always tell people I speak four languages. Good English, bad English, good Spanish, and bad Spanish. You know, so I'm multilingual, definitely. But anyways, um, all right. So we're just approaching the end of our forum today. I do encourage anyone, if you have any last minute uh, questions here, and I am so impressed um, by this group today. You've stayed with us the entire forum. So I'm, I'm glad. Uh, it seems like we did a good job keeping everybody's attention today. Any last minute questions? Any last piece of advice? Uh, for folks uh, who are going through either starting their business or trying to reopen their business. Uh, how about you, Len? Do you want to give any last minute words of advice <laughs> or uh, for folks who are listening? Uh, uh, reach out uh, is the best thing that, uh, that I could say. Uh, you've got some folks on here that are really uh, just waiting for you to give us a call uh, to, uh, to look for some assistance. Uh, our uh, job is to connect you with, uh, with other folks in the community. Uh, I'm interested in some of the businesses like the floral business and the design businesses that we have up here. Uh, it, you have some unique challenges and we'd love to, to work with you uh, uh, to resolve those. Excellent. Emil? No, anyone of this group, I see Bridget, she said that she started in October, 2020. So if you, you know, don't be shy. If you have anything you want to share or you want to reach us directly, please feel free to, to and anyone in this call and as well as in your community. And again, I will repeat again, we are here to help the community. We focus on women, we focus on minority, people of color. And uh, so we want, yeah, more than 50% of our portfolio, we want to move to this uh, area. Excellent. Jennifer? I'm just here to help. I'm glad to be part of the team. Um, I recently started not too long ago, so I'm still learning the ropes, but um, I have a great team. I have Emil, I have Raymond, I have Callie, Kim, Jay, and so we're here for whatever it is you guys may need during this time. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then from my part, um, my piece of advice to everyone has been and will always be be sure to create your dream team, all right? And by the dream team, I mean is your, um, your accountant, your insurance agent, all right? Your business advisor, your lender. Those are the people that you need to have in your speed dial, folks. Remember, accountant, attorney, insurance agent, business advisor, and your lender. Those five people need to be on your team. 
if you're running a business. You cannot run a business without those five folks. I don't care who they are, where they're from, you know, how much they cost. You must have those people on your team in order to run a successful business. So that's my piece of advice for you today. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Emil, for helping co-hosting today's Small Business Forum. Thank you, Jennifer and Len, and all of you for attending today. Please pass the word about this business forum. We'll have it again next, uh, next uh, the first Thursday of June. And I'm blanking out on the, on the date, but it, our, our registration is on Eventbrite. Feel free to sign up, share it on Facebook and LinkedIn and social media. Thank you all for attending. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.